Hi everybody, it's Kristen with Hooks, Books, and Wanderlust, and today I'm here with a quick tutorial to show you guys how to make this really fun textured braid on a piece of crocheted fabric. So this technique is actually made um, using really tall stitches that are basically looped in on each other to make the braid. So let's get started. Okay, we're ready to begin. And to start off, you're going to need a row of really tall stitches. Here I've got a row of triple trebles, which is four yarn overs before I start my stitch. The more yarn overs, the taller your stitch. So the taller your stitch, the wider your braid here will be. So if you have um, shorter stitches, your braids will be smaller. If you have taller stitches, your braids will be wider. So, um, Yes, I got here, my sample is a row of triple treble, which is four yarn overs before I start my stitch. And um, depending on which direction you want your braid to run, uh, will determine on which one you start, which end of your piece you're gonna start with. I want all of my braids running one direction. You could definitely you know, go back and forth if you wanted, but this is what I'm choosing to do for this particular project. So I want my braids to run from the right side of my project to the left. So I'm gonna start with the, far the farthest right stitch of my tall stitches. And I'm going to just pull that stitch out, which in this case is my chain. And I'm just gonna kind of twist it on itself to make a little loop. And I'm gonna stick my crochet hook through that loop. And then I'm gonna find the post of my next stitch grab it and very carefully pull it through the loop that I had made in the first one. So as you can see, I've got this loop that's already created, it's the start of my braid. So I'm just gonna keep doing that across the entire row. And as you go, you'll want to kind of tighten those a little bit to kind of squish them together very gently. You don't wanna do anything that's going to pull your work too tightly, just enough to make it cohesive. So you'll keep doing this across. And then once you get to the end of the row, I'll show you what to do. So let's keep going on this and work our way across the row. Coming up here on the last couple of stitches in my row, so I'm going to just complete all of my loops all the way across, including that very last one. Yeah. And pull that, kind of tighten that up. And as you can see, now I've got this really pretty braid. So at the end, you're going to be left with this little loop. And that is going to have to be secured down, otherwise it will come out. So in this particular project, I'm going to be making a hat and I intend to cinch the top of it. So I'm going to sew it all down at that point. So you can either, um, you know, just go through when you're finished with your project and just sew them down to the back side of your fabric, um, whichever way you've got to, that you can to secure it. Uh, but you will need to secure that in some way. 
So one thing I want to mention with regards to your braid is that um, you can count on it being a little bit of a yarn eater for your project. Um, you're going to lose some of that width, obviously, um, that you had from your tall stitches as you condense it down into this braid. And that's going to vary depending on how tall your stitches are. Um, in my case, I saw about a 50% decrease in size. So this, the height of my um, of my tall stitches was 1.75 inches when I started and then now it should be roughly uh, three quarters of an inch so it's really um, I'm not sure how that works across other size stitches I'd have to play with that but just keep that in mind when you are working up your projects especially if it's going to be a hat where you're gonna to have to you know, worry about head circumference and size. So um, this is something that I am doing as I work my hat so that I kind of have a better idea of how much farther I need to keep going. Um, and I will say too, because I have messed this up, um, that if you need to pull your work out and frog it, you don't even have to unbraid this to do that as long as you haven't secured these loops yet you'll be able to frog them pretty easily so um, that concludes this tutorial i hope that you found this technique fun and interesting and that you found the tutorial helpful if you have any comments or questions please leave those for me below i am going to be linking to a photo tutorial for this technique as well um, that i'll be posting on my blog so look for that in the description box below and you can also be on the lookout for an upcoming pattern on my blog featuring this technique. So stay tuned for that. Um, as always, happy crocheting, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.